The Battle of Tours Part 1 It was a momentous conflict that signaled the end of one civilization's advance and the start of another. After the Battle of Tours, Muslim soldiers withdrew to the south after reaching the northernmost point of their incursion into Europe. The Latin West defeated the Muslims and launched its own counter-offensive. It is important to understand the historical setting of the Battle of Tours. The majority of Western Europe, including France, was conquered by savage Gothic, Germanic, tribes in the 5th century. These tribes were considered barbarian because they lacked a sophisticated culture. However, they did have a strong sense of loyalty to their race and clan, the term that Ibn Khaldun uses is Asabia. They were able to conquer the Roman Empire thanks to their commitment, which promoted cohesion. Race is still a prominent component of European political movements today, as evidenced by Nazi Germany's policies, for example, Spain and southern France were conquered by the Visigoths, Western Germans. Italy and the Western Adriatic coast, present-day Croatia and Slovenia, were taken by the Ostrogoths, Eastern Germans. Another Germanic group, the Franks, strengthened their control over Gaul, central and northern France. The Church of Rome introduced itself as a civilizing force into this conglomeration of barbarous nations. The Goths had established themselves as landlords in the acquired territories by the 6th century, taxing and taking advantage of the indigenous populace. The Church collaborated with the landlords and the strong men in order to create a number of monasteries across Western Europe. The Latin Church and the reigning Visigoths of Spain came to an agreement in the year 565 whereby the Church provided governmental support to the throne in exchange for freedom to preach the new religion. Fiefdom, however, was the only form of government the Church at the time could give, and it was imposed on Spain as well. The abbeys and monasteries, which collected their own taxes in exchange for performing religious rites, were the center of the local political organization of the church. The abbeys and monasteries eventually grew wealthy, and their power increased in direct proportion to their wealth. Because only the church could afford the cost of such construction, the strongest forts were often those built around monasteries and abbeys. The church, the landlords, and the military strongmen shared political and military sway, each of whom imposed their own taxes on the peasants, further impoverishing them. The Germanic peoples played a pivotal role in the history of Northern Europe just as the Berbers did in the history of the Maghreb. Yuthba bin Nafi had conquered the Berbers, a tough, hardy, and attractive race that lived in the Atlas Mountains, during his drive toward the Atlantic Ocean. However, there were ongoing uprisings for more than a century, and numerous expeditions were needed to put an end to them. The Berbers did not finally settle down and take up the role of Islamic flag bearers until the 9th century. The movement of Muslim troops into Europe and the unrest of the Berber peoples are directly related. Armies of the Muslims advanced while the Berbers were inactive. Every time the Maghreb rose in revolt, either the march halted or reversed. This fact again supports our claim that the internal dialectic of Islam has been the main factor behind Islamic history.